Three other players and Phil Mickelson, the leader of the PGA Tour contingent in the competing LIV Golf Series, have asked a federal judge to strike their identities from the antitrust complaint brought against the PGA Tour. Ian Poulter, Hudson Swafford, and Taylor Gooch all submitted separate requests to have their names erased. There is now only three players remaining as plaintiffs in dispute, so stay tuned to find out all the details you need to know. First up, Phil Mickelson, along with three other players, apparently pulled out of the LIV Golf lawsuit against the PGA Tour. Here's all the need to know details. In the lawsuit that was brought forward by a group of LIV golf players against the PGA Tour, a few players including Phil Mickelson, Ian Poulter, Taylor Gooch, and Hudson Swafford had been deleted their names from the legal proceedings. Now the PGA Tour and LIV golf have been at odds ever since the Saudi-funded competition began this summer. Due to its multi-million pound signing on fees and enticing prize monies, LIV has successfully lured some of the game's biggest players from the PGA Tour. As a result, the Tour sought to punish players who switch sides by suspending them from the competition for good. This resulted in 11 players suing the American-based circuit and eventually the Saudi-funded series itself joining the lawsuit. Now, it has to be noted, Mickelson appeared to have started the lawsuit off on the right foot, but the 52-year-old has now made the decision to withdraw from the legal fight. He made the following remarks in a statement, quote, I'm glad that the players on tour are now being heard, appreciated, and cherished and are benefiting from the adjustments recently adopted. He continued, the players' rights will be protected with LIV's engagement in these matters, and I no longer feel the need for me to be involved in the procedures. So now, the LIV's case against the PGA Tour continues without the six-time major champion. Since all of this came out, it has now been reported that Bryson DeChambeau, Matt Jones, and Peter Yulin are the only players left on the case. Along with the LIV bosses, the Breakaway series stated that the latest withdrawals had no impact on the, quote, merit of the case. The three-decade PGA Tour veteran Aaron Mickelson has urged the two factions in golf's raging civil war to cooperate, saying, quote, the greatest solution is for us to come together. The PGA Tour, on the other hand, doesn't appear all that interested, with Commissioner Jay Monahan forbidding any handshakes between the two circuits while the legal dispute is still raging about everything that has happened. Next up, Patrick Reed, who's also a member of the highly controversial Saudi-backed golf tour, is reportedly withdrawn from the DP World Tour. Patrick Reed, a member of LIV Golf, has recently withdrawn from this week's DP World Tour competition at St. Andrews due to an odd injury he sustained in his hotel room last week. You heard that correctly. The 32-year-old claims that the overly soft mattress in his hotel in Marseille caused him pretty intense back discomfort. At the Kazoo French Open, Reed's discomfort was evident on the golf course as he missed the halfway cut after shooting rounds of 73 and 72 to end on three over par. The Alfred Dunhill links, which is set to begin very soon, has seen him pull out. Rory McElroy, Matt Fitzpatrick, Billy Horschel, and Shane Lowry are among the top players scheduled to compete on the old course, but Reed will now not be there. He told online sources that the mattress was simply too soft for him. Although I did well in the pro-am, my back ache was becoming worse. It's sad because I was excited to return to France after attending the Ryder Cup there. The 2018 Masters champion signed on with LIV Golf in June for an allegedly 50 million euro price. Reed cited the desire to spend more time with his kids is one of his motivations for signing up for the Saudi-sponsored tour. The American has had a busy September, though competing in the LIV golf events in Boston and Chicago and the BMW PGA Championship at Wentworth. Until a current legal matter is resolved, LIV golf participants are still permitted to compete on the DP World Tour. Now, in terms of the LIV golf CEO, Greg Norman has recently stated that he has lost friendships due to his LIV golf tour. In other news, Greg Norman, the CEO of LIV golf, has acknowledged that his involvement with the contentious Saudi-sponsored tour has cost him friends, after LIV enticed several high-profile professionals to leave by offering them rich offers. Norman has become a contentious figure within the sport. Eleven players filed an antitrust case against the PGA Tour after the PGA Tour issued bans to LIV rebels, and LIV has since joined. In a Piers Morgan uncensored interview, Norman claimed that the contentious drama had affected him personally. I'll be honest, a Occasionally, my heat shield gets a little frail, and when asked if he had lost any close friends because of the sport, Norman said, quote, Absolutely. However, if people wish to criticize me for my ignorance, they are the ones with a small mind. He then continued, explaining that his legacy might not be as a player, but rather as the CEO behind the new LIV tour and what it could potentially become over the next few years. Now, in probably not very surprising news, the US PGA Tour CEO has claimed that peace 
peace between them and the LIV tour will most likely never happen, here's what you need to know. The possibility or even the mere idea of a peace agreement with the LIV Golf Series according to US PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan is, quote, off the table, as the sports civil war intensifies. The new Saudi-backed series, which attracted notable PGA players with record payouts of $25 million and money guarantees for 54-hole events, caused chaos in golf this year. There has been no mention of unification between the PGA and LIV Golf shortly because many LIV Golf players filed an antitrust complaint against the PGA that will go to trial in early 2024. This week at the President's Cup, Monaghan told the Golf Channel, quote, I don't see it happening. When you consider our current situation in words and deeds, you'll see that we're involved in litigation. Therefore, I believe that card is off the table and has been for a considerable amount of time. When people come together and talk, the PGA has implemented a number of adjustments for the 2022-23 season to ensure that elite talent competes more frequently for larger payouts in a selected dozen events. These adjustments are supposed to stop more well-known athletes from switching to LIV golf. After switching from the PGA to LIV, US players Dustin Johnson, Bryson DeChambeau, Brooks Koka, and Patrick Reed were among those who were ineligible for the President's Cup. Half of the top players on the opposing international side were denied entrance, including British Open winner Cam Smith, the world's third-ranked Australian, Joaquin Niemann of Chile, Abraham Ainser of Mexico, and Mark Leishman of Australia. LIV's detractors bring out the human rights violations in Saudi Arabia and accuse it of sports washing for supporting the young golfers to boost its reputation. Kevin Kisner, the 25th ranked golfer in the world and a member of the US President's Cup team, supported Monaghan's refusal to discuss a contract with LIV Golf. He explained, quote, who knows what would have happened if he had met with them, but I don't believe he would have ever done business with them or felt comfortable letting them pour an outrageous amount of cash into our tour. Kisner said he continued continues stating, quote, they always wanted to participate in what we refer to as sports wash, and in our judgment, it is not how the PGA Tour wants to conduct our business. And finally, the Australian state of New South Wales, NSW, is apparently very open to the idea of welcoming the controversial LIV Golf Tour. According to the state's sports minister, the New South Wales government is, quote, ready and eager to speak with Greg Norman about bringing the Saudi-sponsored LIV Golf Tour to Sydney. Alistair Henskins and minister said he was willing to host the expensive Rebel Series amid growing rumors that Norman is attempting to bring the contentious breakaway tournament to Australia. He told The Guardian that NSW is the ideal location to host big golf events since it's some of the top courses in Australia. Unnamed state governments were, quote, throwing taxpayer money on the table to entice the tour in Australia, according to Norman, in an effort to secure a course to hold an event as early as April of next year. Norman informed online media sources that he has, quote, already held negotiations with state officials Additionally, The Guardian has learned that Norman has approached several Sydney clubs about holding an LIV golf event, but has not yet had formal negotiations with Henskins, who has only been in the position since last month. Due to its financial ties to the oppressive Saudi government, the Rebel Series has drawn significant controversy, but Henskins stated in a statement that NSW intended to bring the biggest and best events to our state. Also, there are more than 166,000 golfers registered in NSW, there are more than 370 golf courses, and the sport contributes around 1.3 billion yearly to the state's economy. So as you can see, this will be a very lucrative deal for the state of New South Wales and also Norman and the league itself. And there you have it, everything you need to know about Phil Mickelson and the three other players who have now left the LIV Tours lawsuit against the PGA Tour. Now make sure to let us know your thoughts down below, and as always, thanks for watching.